The number of voters has surpassed that of Election Day four years ago, but with less than an hour of voting left Tuesday. The more than 50,000 people casting ballots in Bear County was not enough to surpass the turnout of the 2010 midterms. While official numbers have not yet been reported, it's very likely Joe Gonzalez has beaten incumbent District Attorney Nico LaHood. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz and Democrat Beto O'Rourke will face off in November. State Representative Lyle Larson successfully defended against Hollywood Park Mayor Chris Fales. Former Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez and Houston businessman Andrew White are headed to a May 22nd runoff election. And Land Commissioner George P. Bush has claimed victory against three primary challengers. And despite a much-needed win, desperate times aren't over yet for the San Antonio Spurs. Good morning. Those are your headlines from ExpressNews.com. I'm Chance Dorland with your Express News Briefing for Wednesday, March 7th. Brought to you this morning by North Park Mazda, the number one Mazda dealer in Texas last month. While early voting totals for Tuesday's elections blew the past two midterm primaries out of the water, and the overall tally of voters in Bear County has already reached its highest point in two decades for a non-presidential primary, the more than 50,000 people casting ballots in Bear County primaries was not enough to overtake numbers from the 2010 midterms. Voters in heavily Democratic precincts reported a deep dissatisfaction with President Donald Trump and the Republican Party's support for him as motivation to vote. But despite that Trump factor and an increase in voter turnout, apathy is still widespread, as the vast majority of Bear County's 1 million registered voters did not participate, with roughly 9 out of 10 potential voters not casting votes either in person or via absentee ballot. San Antonio Express News columnist Brian Chasnoff writes, that as Bear County District Attorney, Nico LaHood made an art form out of dodging responsibility. However, on Election Day, LaHood couldn't dodge the will of Democratic voters, faced with his record of arrogant behavior and conservative rhetoric that at times conjured President Donald Trump. Joe Gonzalez was a virtual unknown before he chose to challenge LaHood, but now the San Antonio defense attorney will face Republican opponent Tilden Schaefer in November. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz and Democrat Beto O'Rourke easily beat primary opponents to set up a highly anticipated general election battle. In his first election since losing the Republican nomination for president, Cruz defeated Christian TV executive Bruce Jacobson Jr., Houston Energy attorney Stefano De Stefano, Austin accountant Mary Ann Miller, and former Lamarck mayor Geraldine Sam, while El Paso Congressman Beto O'Rourke is making his first statewide run for office, easily beating out retired Houston postal worker Edward Kimbrough and Pasadena insurance agent Sema Hernandez. State Representative Lyle Larson overcame attacks from primary opponent and Hollywood Park Mayor Chris Fales, despite Fales' support from Governor Greg Abbott. And while Larson has previously said he was dismayed by Abbott's decision to weigh in on his race, he now says he's eager to get back to work with the governor and his team on major issues. The nine-way Democratic race for governor is now down to two, with former Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez and Houston businessman Andrew White. While early voting results had Valdez leading White, it wasn't enough, and the two are now headed to a May 22nd runoff election to determine who will carry the Democratic banner against Republican Governor Greg Abbott in the general election. And Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush has claimed victory in the Republican primary with more than 58% of the vote, fending off three challengers who campaigned against his handling of the ambitious Alamo Redevelopment Project, including chief critic Jerry Patterson, who led the land office for 12 years before Bush. And finally, desperate times still aren't over yet for the Spurs, as the team heads into matchups against Houston, Golden State, and Oklahoma City. San Antonio Express News columnist Mike Finger writes that Coach Greg Popovich finally got it wrong on Monday while trying to assess the current state of his team, noting that he thought desperation was a stretch, with Finger replying that desperate might be an understatement, as Monday's razor-thin 100-98 victory against Memphis was a contest between the high expectations of the San Antonio Spurs and the worst team in the NBA, 
nearly blowing a third consecutive fourth quarter lead to prevail against an opponent that has now lost 14 games in a row. However, after the game, Popovich disagreed, noting the Spurs got the win and that's all that matters. Following the game, our Spurs beat reporter filed this report. Paul Gasol hit it right on the head. He said Monday's game against the Memphis Grizzlies was a must-win game, especially since the Spurs had a triple threat coming right after it. Spurs some way, somehow had to get a victory in their home floor, and that's exactly what they did. Hello, everyone. It's Jabari Young here at the AT&T Center after the Spurs beat the Memphis Grizzlies 100-98. to Phenomenal performance from Tony Park from start to finish. Davis Bertans, Bertans had a good game, but, you know, you just have to give the Spurs some credit. Uh, you know, they, they started off slow, should, no, should, couldn't make a shot, and the Grizzlies was really playing well. They were hitting their shots, and the Spurs in the fourth quarter just kind of really turned it on, shot about 60% from the field in the fourth quarter, uh, and outscored the Grizzlies 30-26, to 26, but it was a big performance again from Tony Park. He had eight points uh, in the uh, fourth quarter, and Davis Bertans, Bertans had 13 uh, in the fourth, and the, and the Spurs just did exactly what they they were supposed to do they had to get this win uh, they didn't want to find themselves in a must-win situation especially with a month uh, and a little bit more than a month and a half of basketball to play but that's exactly what the they were in a must win and they got the win though it wasn't impressive it was not an impressive victory but at the same time you had to beat uh, a team like the Memphis Grizzlies who came into this building losing 13 12 12 13 in a row especially on the road uh, hasn't won a game on the road in, in all of 2018 so you know they needed to take care of business and the Grizzlies made it tough made it close especially at the end but the Spurs were able to prevail uh, and then going back to Tony Parker again, you know, he came into uh, the game early, season high for him, 23 points. I asked him, did he sense that this team needed him, especially to put them on their back early, especially when the Spurs wasn't making shots? He said, no, not that early. It was more so late where the Spurs have been struggling uh, as of late. Or in the fourth quarter, you know, when they were coming back and uh, um, this pick and that was very aggressive uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, but early on, they just, you know, Coming off the bench, sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't go your way. And, and uh, tonight, uh, Pop put me really early. Like, uh, I didn't play nine minutes in a row. I think the whole season, I'm pretty sure about that, because I was dying after the first quarter. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised that I got in so fast. And so and so then after the first quarter and playing those nine minutes, you know, obviously you have confidence and stuff like that. So then, uh, like I said, you know, it went my way tonight. And the good news, the Spurs won the game. The bad news, it comes at a cost. Rudy Gay told me after the game he, uh, you know, blew out his left eardrum early in that first half. And uh, just it was just hard for him to, to hear. And he had a headache throughout the game. So uh, he's going to be evaluated on uh, Tuesday before the team takes off the Golden State. His status probably going to be up in the air for Thursday's contest against the Golden State Warriors. And then Tony Parker hitting a, giving us a bomb shuttle. Reporters after the game talking to him. And apparently Paul Gasol has a shoulder injury. And uh, he probably will be out on Thursday against the Golden State Warriors. And Spurs have to just hope that it's not something that's long term. Maybe something that keeps him out for a game or two. Maybe he may even miss this uh, upcoming three game road trip. But the Spurs are going to need him back. They're going to need Paul Gasol, especially since they have, uh, you know, again, uh, a, a nice little home stretch in the month of March uh, on their home floor. So Paul Gasol, a much needed man. Uh, he did play against the Grizzlies, and again, he uh, you know finished the game with, with two points, uh, seven rebounds, four assists. So uh, again, Paul Gasol is definitely going to be needed. Had a good game against uh, and a loss against the Lakers, but you know they're going to need their vet, uh, especially a, a center like a, a Paul Gasol. Again, made this game a must win, and the Spurs did exactly that. And now uh, they're going to find themselves without him. Uh, at least against the Golden State Warriors. We'll see how it goes after that. But all the injury news, Spurs have had an injury season. Spurs news and notes, you know where to keep it. Expressnews.com. And that's your Express Briefing for Wednesday, March 7th from Expressnews.com. Brought to you this morning by North Park Mazda, the number one Mazda dealer in Texas last month. I'm Chance Dorland.